So you want to build a long lang beehive. Where do you start? Do you get a plan, buy materials and start putting it together? Well stick around and see what my approach is. G'day, Mike from Aussie Mike's Bees and welcome to part two of the Hawkesbury Beekeepers Long Lang Build. Whenever you want to build something, it's helpful to know ahead of time all the dimensions of the project. When I started searching the internet for plans to build my long lang, I came across two obstacles. One was that everything out there seemed to be in imperial measurements, inches. And two, the materials weren't necessarily what was available here in Australia. So what to do? I could use tape measures and rules that are dual scaled, got metric and inches. But you know what? I had trouble finding it. This caliper was the only thing I could find. Everything else I've got, metric. 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 So I guess that solution's not for me. The other thing you could do is convert all of those imperial measurements to metric and you could adjust the material to suit those American plans like in this thicknesser. That might work for you if you've got the necessary equipment but what if we came up with our own measurements for the materials we have? Like my stash of golden cypress or maybe plywood or pine or western red cedar they're all different the only important dimensions we need to consider is B space. What is B space? It's the space between the components of the hive that the bees don't fill with comb or seal with propolis. And as long as we maintain this six to nine millimeters between the top of the frame and the roof and the side of the frame and the wall, we're good to go. The frames themselves take care of the space, the B space between them with the shoulders. So we don't need to worry about that. The other measurement to consider is the distance between the bottom of the frame and the floor of the hive. In the wild, bees leave between 28 and 31 millimeters. This allows them to move along the hive underneath and also leave space for queen cells in swarm time. So we factor that into our design. Using our frame to base all the other dimensions from, we can use just about any material. In my case, golden cypress. Or I could make it out of a slab of wood cut from a tree. This is 125 mil thick. It'd be a heavy hive, that's for sure. Or make it out of brick. These cinder blocks would be an amazing long length. Or you could use plywood, you could even make it like a house and do a frame with an inner wall and an outer wall with insulation in them. You could probably skip the power points, the bees don't need that. What about recycling wood from old pallets? That'd work too. Just about anything will work. Next I'll show you how to come up with the dimensions we need for the materials that you have. Now we have all the dimensions that we need, we can draw up a plan and create a materials list. What else is there to consider? 
What about how things fit together? In my build, I'm using finger joints, also known as box joints. They're really strong, and if you use glue, there's a huge surface area for the glue to do its work. Many standard bee boxes use finger joints. I made this jig for doing box joints on my router table. And you could do a similar jig for a table saw, but you might not have that equipment. So what else could you do? Well, the basic option would be get your two boards, put them up together like that, and put a screw, some glue, and you've got yourself what's called a butt joint. The next step up from butt joints is to reinforce the strength of that butt joint with dowels. In this inexpensive kit, it includes guides and the dowel bits and a little supply of dowels too, but you'll need to buy more. There's instructions in there to learn how to use it. I'm not going to go through that here. You could use a biscuit jointer, but that's another piece of equipment. And another method is to do a rebate joint. But if you've got the equipment to do a rebate, I'd suggest stick to the box joints, much stronger. Another consideration is what finish you'll use on your hive. I know that's a consideration for any hive. Some people like to paint. Some people like to oil. And a lot of people do that with great results. But I found you'll be reapplying oil once or twice a year in our climate and paint well. I found with my first hive that I painted that the corners where I get the hive tool in to separate the supers chip the paint and that allowed moisture to get in and start the rot. That was the end of paint. Plus, I hate painting. After the paint on my first hive started to chip off where I used the hive tool to separate supers, I looked for a more robust solution. In came hot wax dipping. I built my own equipment and now dip my own hives and those of other beekeepers. I've heard of waxed hives lasting 20 years, but this gear won't handle a long length. So I built this one, cooking with gas. I use paraffin and microcrystalline wax but you can use beeswax mixed with some rosin. What the rosin does and the microcrystalline with paraffin is make the wax soak into the wood drier. Otherwise it's sort of a greasy finish. The method is a bit like deep frying chips. Once you've got the wax up to 140 to 150 degrees Celsius, you submerge the wood and all the water boils out of it. It foams up. So I do that for 10, 12 minutes or so, depending on whether the water's out yet. Once I pull the wood out of the hot wax, the hot wax that's on the wood then sucks into the wood. It's actually a good time to paint it if you wanted a painted finish because the paint will suck in just like the hot wax. With the wax sucking into the pores of the wood, it actually penetrates quite deep, five or six millimeters. And that's why these hives last so long. Water just cannot penetrate after that. Bees like to have a smooth surface on the inside of their hive. And if the natural surface is rough, they will coat it in propolis. It's been theorized that this propolis provides an antifungal, antibacterial, and perhaps even an antiviral effect. Is it true? I don't know, perhaps a lab coat boffin can do some research on that and find out for sure. In the meantime, we know it can't hurt. I'm leaving the inside of my hive rough sawn to encourage the bees to lay down propolis. It also means that I don't lose as much thickness of the timber running it through the thicknesser to dress that side. More wood, more insulation. That's it for part two. Next month, I hope to bring you into the workshop and cut some wood. We'll see how that finger joint jig works and start assembling the long lang. If all goes well, in part four, I'll hot wax dip the long lang and maybe even populate it with a split from one of the other hives. The aim is to have this hive set up at the club for all to see. Until then, be safe, be happy, and be ready for a bumper spring.